Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar presentation, How to Power Offline First Apps That Are Always Fast and Never Fail, brought to you by Couchbase. I would like to introduce you to our presenter. Our presenter today is Tim Rotak, Director of Product Marketing at Couchbase. Tim has more than two decades of marketing and partnership experience at high growth software and technology companies. He began his career at Oracle with a focus on data warehousing and analytics. Tim has worked internationally to help companies like Business Objects and several startups broaden their product successes. He enjoys working with engineering, sales, and customers to solve data-related challenges. All right, now I will throw it over to Tim. Take it away, Tim. Great. Thank you so much for the uh, introduction and welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, joining today. Um, today's topic, we're gonna talk about Couchbase Mobile um, and enabling modern edge applications. How do we build mobile applications and edge applications that are robust and so they're always fast and that they're always on? And that's what the, the key topic is today. So we're gonna begin by uh, starting high level by talking about what is edge computing, right? What, is, what does that concept mean? Edge applications are part of edge computing. Um, and at the highest level, it's essentially thinking about computing maybe a little bit differently than we do today, where uh, so much of it is, you know, client server, client browser based, um, and, and really a, a new idea where we're shifting the data as well as the processing closer to the end user um, or the device so that um, we're doing things more rapidly uh, and more smartly, right? So where the data is generated, but also being consumed uh, by the end user. And so the, the key elements uh, that make up edge computing are really the edge device. So this could be something like uh, a mobile phone that, that everyone has in their pocket or um, a may, maybe a more bespoke uh, product or device that, that uh, an organization has built, or even an IoT sensor uh, that would be used in manufacturing or in a warehouse or, 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 or in a far, far remote location, right? Uh, could be a, a laptop machine as well. And then in terms of data, uh, an edge node where data uh, within a, a centralized environment is brought further and closer to those end users and those devices. So when we talk to our customers about their mobile applications and their edge applications and what they're trying to build today, um, they tell us that the, the demands and the requirements have shifted dramatically in the past 10 years, right? Um, and they highlight kind of three key areas that they're focused on. The first is really about delivering great experiences at the edge, right? Um, there is an ever-growing demand for the applications that people are using on their phones and their devices to be uh, richer and more functional. I mean, if you think about the apps that you probably have on your uh, phone today, uh, how they compare to those apps of just five years ago, right? Um, and the expectations of users, whether those be consumers or employees or partners or others in the supply chain, um, they expect those experience, like they expect the, the data to be always on, no matter where you are, right? That's your expectation. Uh, I know it is for me. Um, but in terms of building those applications and getting to, to uh, create those applications to those experiences, we need to be able to build these efficiently, right? How can my, our teams um, not have to build the entire solution? How can we accelerate the process? How can we tap the skills that we have and support best practices and the common language and frameworks um, that, that we're using, right? So how, how can we build these things quickly? So those are, those are key requirements, right? Because resources, as we know, are, um, are tight. And then finally, great, now I built it. How do I deploy it? How do I put um, my, my application everywhere and have it run in the different cloud environments uh, that I want to support? How do I make sure that my latency um, is, is uh, as low as possible and my business uptime is as high as possible? And how do I uh, play well and deploy within the different uh, rules and regulations and data sovereignty conditions that I need to deal with uh, in the different places that my, my people uh, are going to be? So in terms of um, mobile and edge applications, 
we've seen uh, not only a shift in requirements, but a huge growth in the need for these things, right? Uh, for these different applications and the demands on or organizations to build more and complex uh, mobile applications. Uh, this was certainly accelerated during the pandemic where um, you had so many businesses need to shift their business model um, and do ways uh, like they had never done before. Touchless became such a greater uh, requirement during the pandemic than it had ever been. Uh, being able to drive to a location and have uh, someone walk out and hand you goods was something that uh, most people weren't doing before, right? But um, in addition to those functionalities, mobile clinics popped up. But also, uh, we continue to scale uh, and improve our factories, uh, the places we work, uh, send people in more remote locations. And all of those uh, people and devices need more capabilities, right? You have, uh, if you think about manufacturing or something like an oil rig, the amount of sensors that might be on uh, that, that in a location or on that location, um, has has jumped tremendously, right? And all of those factor in to edge applications. And there's also new technology, 5G, uh, GPS, um, and these devices are smarter. They have cameras and data uh, or, that they need to uh, manage and things like mobile wallets, right? So all of these complexities working together have driven uh, not only the need for mobile applications, but the need for the capabilities of these applications. And so what's the, the promise of edge computing? It's really to uh, make sure that we're improving that experience overall, right? Making sure that the, the slowness is minimalized, um, you know, data is coming in as fast as possible. Um, and, and in fact, even better that there's no downtime at all, right? If the internet goes down or there's other issues, connectivity issues, I'm sure uh, most of us have been on an airplane where you have an app on your phone that you're expecting to work. Uh, even if it's uh, offline mode, you'd expect some of the functionality and you get that message like, oh, connect to the internet, please, right? Uh, the expectation is that those applications need to work and especially in a, in a business context. And the data also needs to be secure um, when we're, we're having our, our, our employees and our customers uh, and consumers there's uh, an ever increasing need to provide protection of our data. Um, and so edge computing and edge applications give us that capability by being smarter in how and where we store the data. Um, but some of the challenges uh, historically have been with cloud only computing where you're not having an edge situation. And so let's let's look at, uh, at, a, at a quick example. So I wanted to highlight uh, Emirates Airlines, which is one of the leading airlines in the world, the leader out of uh, the United uh, Arab Emirates, uh, roughly 40,000 uh, employees, and they, they travel to around uh, 150 destinations around the globe, right? And uh, like most airlines during the pandemic saw a, a, a large slowdown in travel traffic, um, but now seeing this ramp up uh, readily and, um, and and moving more quickly, right? And so they saw the need to modernize their applications to get ready for um, when travel was starting up. And so that's that's what they did. Uh, and one of the things that Emirates did was look at um, how they handle pre-flight uh, processes and procedures, and they wanted to uh, modernize their checklist system. And so what they did was built an application um, that would be used by pilots and staff um, using different tablets to record all the processes, the checklists, and all the things that they needed to do before flight so they can make sure that they're moving efficiently and effectively on time to get people where they need to go. Um, and also meeting and maintaining all the safety uh, rules and requirements that they have to do. But the challenge was the application they built originally was a cloud only application. And so anytime the uh, airplane would be sitting on the tarmac and would lose some sort of connectivity uh, to the internet, they would lose, the application would go down. And essentially that would cause uh, slowness. Uh, it would cause sometimes a need to go back to paper 
Uh, and overall, it led to a frustration um, within the crew and the pilots and other staff on the ground. And we'll come back to this in a minute. So let's look at some architectures when we talk about cloud and mobile and edge computing. So what we'll look at first is the simplest architecture, which is kind of what I was just talking about and kind of what we see commonly today, where you have an edge device, whether that's a phone or a tablet or could even be a PC, um, uh, working with, you know, maybe there's a local device like a scanner that, that connects and shares data on a, on a, on a Wi-Fi or near, near field communication. But the, the broader apps are connecting to an application in the cloud, uh, which has a, a database that it's connecting to. And that's what we refer to as cloud architecture. Now, a pure mobile architecture would be something like this, where uh, in this scenario, you've got certain applications that are uh, storing data in an embedded database on the device uh, to ensure that the data is being synced between the database um, and uh, on the device and the database in the cloud, right? And an even more sophisticated architecture is an edge architecture. And this is where um, uh, an organization would be able to take their data that would be part of the core application, part of the core database, and be able to move that further out, uh, closer to the edge applications, closer to those devices, um, in more remote data centers or in uh, that are supported by either by telcos or by the cloud providers themselves, moving that data closer to the application, right? Um, and as we'll see, this is all works wonderfully in every single scenario if the internet connection is up 100% of the time. But as we know, as we've all experienced, whether you're in a big city uh, in tight quarters, or you're on an airplane, or you're in a train, or um, you know, if your field service team is in a remote location, that's not always the case. Um, and we can experience slowness, which is challenging, right? The data, uh, we're getting delays, and it might not be, um, it might be kind of halting or damaging our experience and so forth. Um, and those slowness is affecting worker productivity. Uh, you might even have consumers abandon your app if you are uh, um, having something and every time they log in, you get a, a slow experience and they're just frustrated. But even worse is when the, when the connection is cut entirely and then those applications are just completely down, right? So in the mobile architecture, some of those devices are still available online, they still have their data because it's stored in a mobile database, right? Which is a, which is a big step ahead of uh, the cloud architecture. Um, and they're able to potentially share information between each other, right? So syncing between them. Um, but the better scenario is the edge architecture, right? Where still, even if the main data center goes down, we have data distributed through a wider network out closer to the devices and the data syncing can continue even if the main connectivity has gone down. But even there are scenarios where sometimes that will slow down um, and that may even fail, right? You may have these situations. And in that where even if it's maybe not a failure, let's just say the person with the device is so remote that they are um, not able to get connectivity, then the devices still have the data they need and are still able to commute. So let's look at Couchbase and the Couchbase architecture and where, where it fits in. So Couchbase's architecture is supporting the mobile architecture, the edge architecture, and yes, can support the cloud architecture too, obviously. Um, but more importantly, as we're talking about mobile and edge computing, um, the different scenarios we're looking at here are in the edge devices, uh, customers will embed the Couchbase Lite uh, mobile embeddable database, a uh, flexible NoSQL database with, with lots of great capabilities, we'll talk about more later, um, which allows customers to store the data on the application. Likewise, Couchbase um, provides peer-to-peer -peer sync technology so that uh, employees on uh, local networks can share 
information behind the scenes between the devices, unbeknownst to them. They don't, it's not like they have to share it manually, right? These, these uh, devices are syncing uh, amongst each other, making sure that a change in one device is uh, show, shows up in uh, the second device of a colleague, right? Um, uh, and making this happen kind of in the middle tiers is the Couchbase server and our syncing technology, uh, we'll refer to as Sync Gateway. And this is what controls the syncing and the replication of data between the cloud layer and the intermediate layer and the edge devices. So this is what's ensuring that data is always on, it's fast uh, and reliable. And so if we go back to the Emirates story, their solution was an application called their eTech log that they developed. And they had uh, a, a, a strict list of requirements, including offline first capabilities, right? They needed this uh, application to work all the time, 100% of the time. And so uh, this is what uh, they were able to achieve by leveraging Couchbase Mobile uh, and building in uh, the embedded databases into their application. So they get 100% uptime for pilots and um, crew and flight attendants when they're doing their checklists, when they're changing inventory in terms of, let's say, crew, uh, uh, flight attendants are, are, are selling things on the plane, um, but all of this is happening and, and being recorded and shared between the different units and flight crew on the ground, right? Um, likewise, even in flight or even with this, when they're disconnected, the peer-to-peer -peer sync allows the tablets to share information uh, between each other as one member of the team makes a change, makes an update that is then replicated to the other devices. So everyone has the right information all the time. And because of this, uh, because of the confidence that they were, were, were seeing, uh, crew members uh, were able to highly or very interested in adopting this technology because it meant they could get away from paper, uh, which uh, you know was slower and more cumbersome, required duplicates and a lot of things like that. And so uh, this application has make, makes it easier for them to uh, move passengers around more efficiently, more effectively, uh, and more more safely. Uh, and as if you've ever traveled on a plane, I think we would all like the uh, process of pre-boarding and boarding and takeoff and all the all the aspects of flying that uh, we really don't enjoy to move more quickly every time. Every time, right? Being being stuck at an airport due to delays uh, is is never fun. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about some key aspects of edge uh, edge applications and edge computing. First one I want to talk about is being always fast, right? This is hinted at this earlier, but the idea that um, you know, as users, whether we're we're using apps for our organization or just personal use, um, the the experience we have, I think, with mobile devices, even more so than when we're, we're using applications on our, our laptops, is this idea that the data needs to be there all the time and needs to be fast. Like for me personally, when something's not working, it's, you get into this, I don't understand why this doesn't work uh, given, given it's 2022 and all the technology we have and so forth, right? Um, and so driving that, that responsiveness um, an example is like real-time responsiveness in, in gaming, right? So, um, uh, particularly with gaming, when they're do doing uh, uh, multiplayer gaming and you are doing battles against uh, a competitor, and um, it's very noticeable when there's lag in the system, right? You're, uh, it, it makes it makes the overall experience worse, right? And so there's a low tolerance um, for that, and especially. Uh, if the games are very intensive, right? Um, but here's the reality. This is this goes far beyond gaming because um, all applications uh, just seem to continue to be growing in terms of complexity and the richness and the experience that that they're trying to deliver. I've I I, I, I rarely find uh, application development where uh, in the future the needs of the application go down. 
right? It, we're, we're always trying to build um, uh, more sophistication, more personalization, a better experience into our applications. And that uh, it entails more data, uh, more processing and so on. And so um, having, having speed be as fast as possible uh, is helpful in, in, in you know, kind of across verticals. And so why is edge faster? So, uh, you know, what I'm gonna show here really is, uh, may seem like, yeah, of course that makes sense, right? The, the fact that you move the data closer to the application, right? It's going to be, it's going to be quicker. Um, and what we're, we're seeing in, in our scenarios is that, you know, sometimes you have latency from cloud to edge and, you know, triple digit milliseconds, right? As the data hops across. Uh, the internet and if you can put an edge device uh, sorry an edge data center out there and put data on it you can reduce that to single digit so a, a drastic reduce uh, reduction in the time for the processing of the edge device um, not as it not only is it the moving of the data closer right but what you've done is eliminate something you've eliminated all of those hops across the, the internet you never know which way the data is going to travel the number of hops it's going to take, and by moving the data center closer, you eliminate some of that uh, some of that unreliability and so forth. Um, and so, while the last slide was just kind of theoretical and made sense, right? We actually proved it. So, Couchbase, working with our partner AWS, um, did some testing of uh, edge nodes with um, a Couchbase uh, Sync Gateway and just doing some speed tests, right? So what we see here in the chart um, is the, the red and the blue is read and write speeds for a standard AWS zone. And the yellow and green are uh, AWS's uh, wavelength zones, which are uh, in 5G network um, closer to the user, right? And, and the tests show that in terms of the read and write latency, there was a, a big reduction in terms of speed, right? Around 80%. And what that means is from looking at it from another angle is essentially we can get more business done, right? We can process more information um, and, you know, uh, get more results, you know, no matter what the, the application is trying to achieve, right? So how do you get the fastest time? I, I think this may be clear from what we hinted at earlier, but beyond just pushing out pushing data out to the edge of the data node is ensuring that the data is on the device, right? The, an embedded database in an application is going to be uh, giving customers the best in terms of real-time response, real-time feel for the end user um, and making sure that speed is there, right? The challenge is obviously managing the data back and forth, having smart synchronization um, so that you're not only um, have the right data on the device to start with, but also over time, you are managing the flow of data uh, so that you're sending the right pieces and the right elements to the right users and right devices, right? So this eliminates slowness and speed um, and eliminates critically the fact when internet connection goes down or just uh, the user is away from a connection, um, they're still able to use their application um, and do the work they need to do. And that really gets to then being always on. So let's look at uh, another example here. So the first example I talked about Emirates Airlines, right? A, a global leader in um, nautical aviation and, and um, sorry, in aviation and 40,000 employees. We're talking, you don't need to be a, a massive corporation to leverage this technology. Um, healthcare requirements um, with, a, with a customer um, that's produced an application called Backpacking EMR. Um, and in this case, um, the application, the team that built this is, is less than 10 people, right? They're called uh, Binary Bridge. Um, they're based in the United States. And what they do is they build uh, mobile applications that are used by uh, doctors and nurses and volunteers 
to help uh, manage healthcare in remote clinics. Um, here's an example in, in Haiti. And it's more than just storing the data. It's not just uh, you know a spreadsheet where people are typing in and, and capturing the data. What they're doing is uh, capturing the data, but also it's being shared amongst the other devices. Um, it's being captured at registration. It's being shared uh, across the different processes uh, within the clinics. It's being shared with different labs or ex exam rooms or um, you know uh, other elements within the system. And then following that is being sent uh, can be sent to pharmacies and so forth. So um, for the the doctors and healthcare workers having the information they need and the ability to share, even when there's uh, no internet available, they find this you know tremendously uh, helpful and uh, you know even getting to the point where the opportunity to save lives by being able to provide this healthcare in a way uh, that they were uh, not able to do this in the past. So syncing from the cloud to the edge is critical. Um, here's kind of a, a diagram that shows uh, some of the elements I showed in the past, which was Couchbase server and the Couchbase sync gateway uh, operating at the different tiers and being able to, from the server to the, to the data edge center, being able to synchronize data and then out to uh, the individual devices. And those individual devices have the embedded Couchbase Lite uh, database, which is syncing with uh, the middle tiers or the cloud tier, um, but also leveraging the peer-to-peer -peer sync so that way that data is being shared between them. So even when the outage happens, um, all of the devices uh, have the data that they need um, and are uh, able to share amongst each other. So that way the users uh, are able to make sure they have the real time information. And once the connectivity is reestablished, uh, then that data is can be uh, synced back with uh, the, the middle tiers uh, and the cloud tiers to make sure that everything uh, is in place. So we talked a lot about syncing, but wanted to talk quickly about building, right? Because without building these applications, um, you know, the, the syncing technology, uh, you know, is just one aspect of that, right? So uh, a key component of Couchbase Mobile is our embedded database, Couchbase Lite, um, and what it allows for customers to develop uh, really rich applications with a flexible NoSQL database uh, embedded uh, on the application, um, whether that be a mobile device, an IoT device, or desktop uh, uh, device, um, with native support for iOS, for Windows, um, Android. Um, uh, customers can build using .NET and Java. Um, and recently, uh, with our most uh, uh, with our newest version of Couchbase Lite 3, uh, support for uh, a C API that allows um, customers to build and see and run essentially in almost every embedded platform, right? So they have very broad support um, in terms of how they build. The Couchbase Lite database also, like Couchbase, leverages SQL uh, as a query language, making which is the world's most common query language. So customers can uh, very easily and more familiarly be able to develop queries uh, against the database, um, but also uh, providing you know, a common experience between Couchbase Server and Couchbase Mobile, right? So that's different than uh, some of the other products on the market where you may have had a customer acquisition or you have different databases on the back end and a different database on the mobile device. Uh, which requires uh, or, or leads to more uh, complexity. So credit, that's critically what you get. And I think it, it also uh, extremely important is what you don't have to build, right? The synchronization technology um, of moving data back and forth between cloud and edge and device and peer-to-peer -peer syncing, uh, conflict resolution, um, controls to manage the amount of data and where it goes and doing that in a 
uh, smart way is all uh, set for customers out of the box. So it's really about uh, couch-based mobile giving an accelerated uh, uh, path to getting the sophistic, uh, sophisticated edge solution out the door uh, and, and eliminating uh, the amount of work that needs to be done to, to build these applications. So I wanted to highlight um, another example here where um, it goes beyond just the mobile device, right? So this is a customer is called Arthrex and they produce surgical equipment um, specializing in uh, bone and ligament surgery. Um, so as you can imagine, pretty, uh, pretty sophisticated needs uh, and, and, and requirements in terms of building these applications uh, that are used uh, for super important uh, aspects of life, right? Their surgical equi uh, equipment based uh, is Linux-based um, and stores data within Couchbase Lite. And they are storing all kinds of information in their devices and in their technologies, right? Um, patient data, surgery information, these devices have lots of uh, media information, images and videos and so on. So the metadata from those, those images are all stored uh, within uh, the Couchbase, uh, Couchbase Lite embedded database and then synced with their other systems, um, whether that be partners and hospital systems, um, but primarily through their own uh, centralized uh, platform that they call the Arthrix Surgeon Vault. And so that syncing all happens between all these different devices um, in uh, hospital rooms and uh, the pre-surgery and post-op. It helps them build out reports uh, that they can use when working with patients um, and also help them plan ongoing care, right? So very sophisticated use of embedded technology, but not only in kind of mobile devices that the doctors might use, but all kinds of different equipment um, that they're that they're using across all their platforms, and they've adopted the uh, adopted the technology very broadly. So, what does this mean in terms of kind of the the overall examples? That Couchbase is really helping our customers fulfill the promise of edge computing um, through our different uh, data tiers and synchronization and security and authentication uh, technologies. It really means that customers can build applications, edge applications that they want um, that reduce the, snow, the slowness and the lag that uh, still exists within the web today, uh, even though you know, it, the edge networks are, or, or networks are improving, 5G is getting faster and it's being rolled out further, uh, but it's not everywhere. Um, and more importantly, the downtime that comes to lost connections, right? That, that can ruin the experience of a uh, consumer, uh, frustrate your employees in their applications, even, you know, making them go back to paper. Uh, I've seen this with several customers who come to us. We often find that customers are coming to us where they've already built a V1. They built V1 uh, and the adoption was 30, 40 percent, right? Because of the frustration of, of uh, their, you know, their employees uh, and they needed something more robust that would work all the time. Um, and then also, it, it, the the promise of the edge allows for uh, more control over sensitive data, right? So, Couchbase, uh, Couchbase Lite embedded database supports AES 256 encryption uh, at rest uh, to protect protect data, and uh, TLS 1.2 over the wire as data is being uh, transmitted, um, and also critically provides a lot of controls. So. Uh, customers can decide where data is being isolated and precisely move that data uh, to make sure that they're meeting uh, their you know, regulations and, and any other sort of guidelines, whether that be internal or external, uh, to make sure they are uh, in compliance and protecting data in the proper way. So real quick, I've covered a, a good amount of our edge technology, and I wanted to now just kind of introduce uh, further advancements for us in this area. I wanted to introduce Couchbase Capella and our app services. So Capella is our database as a service. And what you get with uh, Capella 
uh, is similar to what cu customers have received with Couchbase Server in the past, except it's a fully managed solution. So you get all the great aspects of Couchbase in terms of flexibility and scalability and performance and high availability, but a lot of automation behind the scene for uh, setting up databases in the cloud, managing those databases, making it easy to scale um, and secure those databases. And that at, at its core is what Capella does and adds in terms of functionality and capabilities uh, above and beyond Couchbase server that you might self-manage. Well, recently we've introduced the Capella app services, uh, which is adding the mobile support for our Capella database as a service. So what you're getting now is the ability to build great mobile applications um, and edge applications for enterprises in a faster way um, and where a lot of the automation is uh, being added in in terms of a lot of the back end uh, capabilities in the back end services, right? Uh, it adds a new UI to make uh, building of these applications or the managing of the synchronization easier, but still delivers the great offline first experience of our embedded database, including peer to peer syncing and, and the data conflict resolution. And it's all easier to manage, um, streamlined to get you up and running, uh, giving, giving people faster time to market to build applications and modify applications, making sure that they've they're reliable uh, with the lowest total cost of ownership. And just really quickly, what that would, would look like is Capella uh, in the cloud managed through a control plane where we're also controlling the app services, the syncing technology, um, and the syncing of data out to the edge devices um, and through peer-to-peer uh, -peer sync, ensuring that the data is being moved so that, again, users have the real-time information that they need. And kind of wrapping up towards the end, Couchbase Mobile. Um, you know what we've what we've covered here is ensuring that your edge applications are essentially always fast and always on, right? Making sure that that experience, that that consumer experience or customer experience or employee experience, uh, they're getting the speed they need uh, with low latency uh, from from an edge data node. They're getting the reliability that it's always on. Um, and making sure that the privacy is there uh, so that uh, we're meeting data regulations and so on. So it's easy to build, uh, easy to manage, and easy to deploy uh, across the different platforms. And with that, I'll wrap it up. Uh, I wanna thank you for taking your time today. Hopefully you found uh, the material and the, uh, the examples, the customer examples uh, uh, useful. Uh, if you're looking for more information on Couchbase Mobile, I've got some links here in the presentation that I think will be available after the session, um, but you can search for couchbase.com uh, mobile uh, or edge computing or Capella to get to a 30-day free trial of our Capella database as a service. Um, and with that, I wanna turn it over to uh, the Q&A time to see uh, if we have some questions. Okay, so let me see here. Uh, first question is around um, how does uh, Couchbase Mobile and the database handle data sync conflicts? Um, so it's a good question. Um, the the way that this is handled between the edge databases and, and the syncing technology um, is through our replication protocol. And what this does is it, it's an automated conflict resolution process that's based essentially on a, a set of rules that are set up in advance um, by the customer to make sure that the data is uh, resolving conflicts in the way that they, they, they want, right? So they've got their different policies in place. Um, there are kind of uh, default uh, uh, rules and uh, that can that are that are available to customers, uh, but then they can easily be updated and specified to change to to make sure that they're uh, meeting the needs um, of our customers and that they're the the uh, conflict resolution is happening in the way. Uh, 
that they need to make sure that the right data is in the right places. Okay. Uh, next question is about uh, 5G. Um, can't 5G provide the low latency for real-time apps? Um, 5G is great. Uh, you know, I think we all love 5G or, or essentially the promise of 5G, the idea of 5G that data is going to move a lot faster, right? And you, we do see this in certain places, right? The 5G networks are rolling out um, in certain areas, some more than others. Um, but as good as 5G is, it does only solve part of the problem, right? It really solves for the last hop from um, you know the the edge device to wherever it's being connected, right? So um, independent of that, uh, edge nodes will dramat dramatically uh, reduce the speed and the distance that data needs to travel, right? That's one thing. I mean, you think about uh, round trips um, from a tower station out to uh, a central database can still take hundreds of milliseconds, right? And so that adds up over time. Uh, especially in uh, a mobile application where people are expecting kind of real-time uh, experience, right? Or if you're processing a lot of data, uh, like a um, uh, in in IoT sensors and things like that, uh, you need the data to move more quickly and so forth. So um, 5G is great, but by itself, um, it doesn't uh, doesn't solve the entire problems of ensuring that data is always fast and always on. Right, and that always on is, I think, the critical factor, uh, particularly on the the type of edge computing uh, that um, one is looking to do. Okay, I think that's it for questions, and so I think at this point we will wrap it up. Thank you again, everyone, for joining. Uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to learn more about. Uh, edge applications with Couchbase. And with that, DZone would like to thank Tim for a great presentation. DZone would also like to thank Couchbase for providing our audience with a great webinar. Lastly, thank you to everyone who attended today. We hope you learned something that will help you in your developer career.